This week we're talking about forms and I wanna take you through some of the things that are talked about in the notes, but I also wanna go beyond the notes. So what I would ask that you do is work through all of the notes looking at, especially the concept of working with template driven forms in Angular and how to do validation, how to set up the form, working with CSS and, sh and so on. And what I'm gonna do with you now is I'm gonna carry on with our example app that we've been building and I'm gonna add the ability to create a new bridge. So imagine we needed to be able to add more bridges to this. And I'm gonna focus on the all the different parts of building these a form to do this. So forms, whether you're working in Angular, React, or just in the web in general, they present unique challenges because we have to be able to track state, which we've been doing for all of our components. We have to render that state to the user, keep it in sync. But now we have this other problem where the user is giving us data back again. So we're dealing with data changes from underneath where our code is making changes to the component, data is coming in from a server, whatever it is. And now we also have data coming in from above. Uh, if you think about the user interacting with the DOM, interacting with our form elements, entering data, and we have to accept that data, we have to be able to trust that data, validate that data, or not trust the data actually and work with it in order to be able to uh, manipulate it, send it to a server, use it in other parts of our app. So forms have to keep track of a data model. They have to keep that data model in sync with what's in the DOM and the user is gonna do things to trigger changes in it. All right, so Angular gives us two different approaches for working with forms. As I say, the notes focus on template-driven forms and template-driven forms are, are great. They're very powerful and they are good for doing small or basic forms, any kind of a business form that you're gonna have in an app. Um, you, could use, you could use template driven forms. So I'm gonna start by building it that way. The second way that Angular suggests that you build forms are to use what's called reactive forms. And I'm going to also show you how we could, we could move our um, form and use reactive forms. And then I'm gonna do a third version of it where it's not really a different style of form, but so far we've been focused on writing our own components. And honestly, you're not gonna spend tons and tons of time writing your own components because there's so many amazing components that are already out there. So if you're building a form, we could use something like the Angular Material Design Components. And these are libraries of pre-built components and they're really high quality. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use it to build like forms and we're gonna get some, just some fancy features that we don't have to hand code. So I'm gonna show, I'll take you through step by step on, we'll do all of these, it will do it in segments and we'll start start building this out. Okay, so let's let's dive in and let's start, let's start out doing a reactive form. Okay, so if we're gonna do anything with a form, what we have to do is we, we're gonna have certain parts of the Angular platform that we have to bring into our, uh, into our code. So the first change that I'm gonna make is in our app module, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull in another part of Angular here. I wanna, I wanna import the forms module. Angular forms. I'm gonna pull in the forms module and I'm gonna add this to my uh, list of imports. So this is very similar to what we did when we set up the, um, the routing. So now that's gonna allow me to work with various directives that I'm gonna need when I'm building the template driven form. So the template driven forms are gonna be about adding directives to our DOM elements in our template in order to be able to sync things up in uh, our component. Okay, so step one complete, we have our forms module imported. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna add a new component. So over the course of this these series of videos, I'm gonna do this form three different ways and I'm gonna name it appropriately. So I'm just gonna make another um, So let's add uh, ng generate component, and I'll call this bridge form template driven. I'll do bridge form reactive, etc. 
All right, so I have a new, I have a new template here. I have a new component, the bridge form template component. And what I'll do so that it's easy for us to work with this is I'll just throw a new route into our routing. So I'll jump into the routing and I'm going to, I'm going to import the bridge form template driven component. That's a mouthful from And let's make a new route here. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll set a path and I'll have a, um, a new route called new-template. And when that gets hit, I will render the uh, form. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hijack this right-hand area of our app so that I can, so that I can render the form. Okay, so I need to, I need a comma and I've got my, good. Okay, save that, recompile that. Okay, so that should allow me now to go to a new route slash new template, uh, no, yeah, new template and I get the following. So I get this empty shell where I can start um, building out my component. Okay, so let's go do some work on this component. So over in our TypeScript for the template driven component, let's do a few things. So step one, I am going to import the ng form, import ng form from um, Angular forms, like so, so I can work with the form. And what I need to do here is I need to define um, a model for the back end of my form. So where are we gonna store all the data that's gonna go in our form? And while we're thinking about this, let me just go and remind you of what our data looks like. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab this. This is our bridge data type, the interface that we've been working with, and I'll throw a comment right here and just sh shrink this down slightly. So we need to deal with an ID, which is a string, a name, which is a string, latitude and longitude are numbers, a year is a number, and then we have an optional length and an optional width. So we need to model that in our in our class. And so we could do a couple things. If we If we wrote a class, we could have a bridge class which I currently don't have, I just have an interface. So we could add a class and we could create a bridge instance here that we're going to manage, or you could expand it out and you could have all these properties in here, which is what I think I'll do just for simplicity's sake. So I'm going to define the fact that I have a, I have an ID, I have a name, whoops. Uh, I have a latitude, longitude, year, length, could be number or could be null, and uh, a width, number, null, like so. So we have the data model that's associated with the form that we wanna build. It, it as the backing part of our component, our component has this uh, integrated. Now, another thing I'm going to do in here before I start working on the template is I'm going to throw in a method to deal with submitting the form. So I'm going to say that I have an on submit and on submit takes a form which is of type ng form. So that's why we had to import ng form up here at the top. And for now, I'll just console log uh, submit and I'll log the form. Save that. And we've got the basics in place for what we need to do. 
So most of what we're gonna do for a template-driven form, as the name implies, we're gonna move into the template and we're going to put elements into the template and then we're gonna use directives from Angular to connect the data model that we have uh, backing this thing in our component with what's happening inside of the template. Okay, here's our template. So let's, let's work on this. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna have a form and the form's gonna be the container for everything that I'm gonna do. And well, let's just start out, let, let's start building this thing as if it was regular HTML. So if you imagine we have, I need to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in a label for all of my elements and I'm gonna say that this label is for an element called uh, bridge form ID. And let's say that the label is ID. And below that, I'm gonna have uh, an input element. And inside the input element, I'm gonna do a few things. So I'm gonna say the ID is equal to the same ID. Uh, this is bridge. Uh, let's get rid of this. Yeah, that's better, bridge ID. And what else do I need to do? I need to say that this, the type of this is equal to text, which is default, but I'm gonna be explicit about it. And I'm gonna say, this is a text input. I'm gonna put up some placeholder text. And just to give people an example of what the, um, what the IDs look like when they're trying to do this. This is a required field, so I'm gonna specify it with the required attribute. And when the form opens, I automatically want this element to receive the focus. So like that, okay? And while we're doing this, let's just bang out all of them and we'll have, we'll have the pieces that we need. So I need another label for um, bridge name, this is the name, another input, bridge name. Um, actually, I forgot that I also need a name for these. So the name for this would be ID. This is gonna be the name that within the form itself as opposed to the ID of the element in the DOM. So we have the name, we have the type is text, we have the fact that it's required, and we're good. We have another label, four equals bridge lat. So this is the latitude input ID equal bridge lat name equals latitude, type equals. Now, when you're doing something like latitude, it's a number. So your temptation is gonna to be to use a number. And one of the things that I want you to think about when you're building forms and you wanna do validation is whenever you can choose a type for an input element that matches the type of data that you expect, you're gonna have a better experience. There's a number of reasons for this. One. The browser is often gonna do a little bit of validation for us. So in the case, for example, of an email address, you cannot and should not try and write a regular expression for an email address, but the browser can check if an email address is valid for you. Or um, same thing with a URL or a telephone number, et cetera. Now, another thing with some of these is like with a telephone number, it's gonna pop up a different keyboard on a mobile in a mobile browser context, which has numbers instead of um, just having letters. You know, so for, for your users who are trying to uh, enter this data, it's gonna be a lot easier for them to be able to do this based on the type that you pick. So you're, you know, listening to that, you're gonna say to yourself, well, I should use a number. And I'm gonna encourage you not to use numbers, but to use text. And the reason is that when you set a number, one of the things that the browser will do is it will make it so that when you, if you roll your mouse button over top of it, it will jump the, it'll jump the number up and down. And it's a feature where you can, um, you can increase or decrease a number with little up or down arrows. 
And when, with something as sensitive as a latitude and longitude where you have many, many decimal places and being off by a few decimal places is gonna change the effect of this, I think what you wanna do here is you wanna leave this as text so that you don't have that problem. So FYI, I'd be careful when you're doing this. So placeholder is equal to, we give them something that looks like what we want, 686 here. And this is a required field and Okay, watch that I don't screw this up. Let's copy and paste. You know that you're never supposed to copy and paste, right? Good. Longitude, longitude. See, I almost screwed it up. Longitude, longitude. Um, the example for this would be something like negative 92.4925. It's required. Uh, okay, that's good. We need to do something similar for the year. So we'll do the year, 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 year. And here I want to do um, four digit year. And let's, because we can here, let's throw in um, some extra validation. Let's say that uh, we wanna use a regular expression pattern for this. So we wanna, we wanna have numbers, zero, a digit zero to nine. We wanna have uh, four of those, and that's what makes it valid. However, people might have white space at the beginning and they might not and they might have white space at the end and they might not. And so we're gonna allow that. So we're looking for, if we were to trim this value, we would have a four digit number that we'd be looking for uh, from this. And we could, I mean, you know, we could write a regular expression for this kind of stuff too, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna leave it for now. Uh, what else do we need? We need width and length. So let's do that as well. So this is width. Width, um, placeholder for this, do I care? Um, I guess I'll just say that this is optional and uh, length is expected to be in meters. Get rid of this. And this is not required, so I'm gonna pull that off. And we got one more we have to do, like so. So this will be the length. Length, length, length and length optional wait a second what am i doing here with 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 length 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 as i say don't copy and paste obviously you didn't see me do it okay Barring any obvious bugs, which I'm sure you're seeing right now and I'm missing, uh, let's let's begin with this. So what we have here is we have a we have a like just an HTML5 form for our data, and I guess in order to style this thing, let's throw um, to differentiate it. Let's put an ID on this and say this is our bridge form template version. Um, that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna save this. And as, as is the case with all HTML5 forms, they look like garbage. So you produce this form and you know you sort of weep into your terminal uh, because it just looks it looks terrible. So let's do let's just do a little bit of styling. So what I want to do here is I think essentially I want to have the form just go down. And so I want to have label followed by the input element for it and I want them all to go down and I want to do some spacing and so on. So let's do let's do a little bit of CSS on this. 
So if we style our, our outer container, which is the form, that's our bridge form template element. Uh, what can we do? So let's, uh, let's do a margin around the outside to give it some space. So it's not so tight to the, uh, to the edge. Let's do some inner padding of, with some more space and let's put a border around it. Uh, one pixel solid dark gray border around the, and I need to be able to type. So we'll just, you know, create a little box around it like this, a little bit of space, we punch it in like that. Let's make it so that this thing can expand, but it can only expand to say 400 pixels. And then any extra space that we have, uh, so the margin on the uh, left, make it auto, margin on the right, make it auto like so and I yeah so it would center it so if this thing if, if I were to expand this out it's gonna never get any wider than that um, max width that we have there so that looks pretty good and then what I want to do is I want to turn this thing into a grid so I'm gonna display all of the children of this form using uh, CSS grid. And the way that grid works is you need to set up uh, whatever your columns and your rows are gonna be. I'm just gonna define my columns. And basically what I want is I want the first column to, to occupy like for the labels, like a third of the available space and then everything else to go to the other, uh, the other column. So I'm gonna say I want uh, 0.3 fractional units and then one fractional unit for the other elements. And what it's going to do is it'll just snap everything into those grids. For, it'll, it'll create all the rows for me based on this template. So you can sort of see here if I, let me show you, if I, if I go to my form, my form is inside here. Here's my form. So you can see that the form is a grid, two columns. The left-hand column is about a third. The right-hand column is everything else that's available. And that's what it looks like. So let's, let's do one, a couple more things. So everything is really tight. So what I'm gonna do with this grid is I'm gonna say that I want to put a gap in between all of the, all of the different cells of, I don't know, try 15 pixels push everything out a little bit. That's not bad. And yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. So if we, um, let's take all our labels and let's make the font size a bit bigger. And let's do the same thing for um, all of these input elements. So our input elements, um, I want them to fill the available width. I want them to have some, I want some more room on the inside. Like see how all this, the text is really tight to the, to the border. So let's just punch that out. Um, punch that out a bit, increase the font size to match the font size of our labels, make it a bit bigger, um, set the border one pixel solid dark gray as well. And let's round the corners, uh, border radius um, a little bit, something like that. So we, yeah, that's not bad. Um, we could probably, you know what I'm going to do? You can see how this doesn't line up with this anymore. The label and, and this, they don't line up. So I think what I want to do is I want to have my grid. I want to, um, align everything centered. So it's, you know, vertically it's coming down. It's centered in the, in the box there. So that, that's not bad. Um, you could play with this. You might say this is too big. I don't know. 
I think when you're building forms, um, there's a tendency, you know, a lot of you are young too, and you're going to say, well, this all looks too big. But as a lot of your users, they're going to be getting older or they're going to have limited uh, eyesight or they're going to have difficulty with their vision. So don't be afraid to have your font size go bigger because it's going to make it easier for people to use. Your goal is not to make things tiny, but to make things usable. So you've got lots of room here. Expand it out, make it breathable, give people the ability to um, easily use your form. So if I refresh this, this automatically has focus. So yeah, that's that's pretty good. Um, what else should we do? I guess uh, let's throw a button in here. I, I didn't put a button to submit this thing. So let's, um, I'll throw a button in here. It's gonna be an input element and the ID is bridge submit. Type is equal to a submit button. The name is equal to submit, like so. And I've thrown it in a class because what I wanna do is I wanna position this over here toward the right. So if you look at my grid, if you look at this form, what I really want to have happen is I want this, I have like, this is a grid column one, this is a grid column two, and this is a grid column three. So I want this button to sit between two and three, like to sit in the space that's over here. So if we, uh, let's just change, let's change the where, where this button sits. So I have class equal button on this div. If I, let me think for a second. Um, my button class, I'm gonna say, put it in grid. Put it in grid column bet between two and three. And the column, the grid columns are the outside bounds of this thing. Uh, that's where I want it to, I want it to go and let's align, um, let's, uh, let's align it to the right so that it sits over on the right, like so. Um, and I don't like, so let's just change this um, submit button. Uh, it's too wide, make it something, I don't know, like 150 pixels, color white, and background color of, I don't know. Yeah, so the color choices are not great, but um, there you have it. If we, you know, we could, what else could we do? We could say when you, um, when you hover over this or when this thing has focus, Then we could say uh, the background, oh my gosh, background color could be, I don't know, some other color. So if I hover over this, it lights up. Anyway, terrible, terrible color choices, but I'm not gonna, I won't dig into these too much. We could figure out something better to go with the palette of this over here, which is really what we should do. But for now we've got, you know, we have essentially what I need uh, to be able to not have this thing look so, so terrible. Okay, so let's, let's go back to our form and let's think about what do we need to do in order to work with this thing from the standpoint of um, Angular. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to deal with this form 
from Angular. So I have an ID on the form, but what I want to also do is I want to I want to set uh, what's called the template reference variable. And so this is kind of like in React, you have refs. This is a similar idea. So I'm going to say bridge form equals ng form. So what I'm saying here is I want to be able to refer to this form element as bridge form, which is going to allow me to do this. Uh, when the ng submit event occurs, I want to fire the on submit method that I have, and I want to pass it, uh, pass it my bridge form like so. Okay, so this, let's go here. This is going to allow me to get access to the form. You know, when it gets submitted, this is where it's going to go. Okay. Console. So you can see I click submit and I've got my ng form instance comes here and I have access to it. Okay, so that piece of it is working. So we'll do more with it when I have data on it, but now let's think about these form controls. So with these form controls, think about the problem that we have to solve. We, in the past, in Angular, when we want to bind data in here, we'll have some attribute and we will set it equal to some value like this. So this is binding in to the component you know you're you're passing some property into it we also have a mechanism where when we have some kind of an event handler that we want to call we'll say when this event happens we want to call something like so so this is data binding that's coming out of the component so we have data binding that's going in and we have data binding for going out so what we want to do right now is we want to combine those we want to say I am interested in two-way data binding. I want to be able to keep track of data changes that come from the data model, but I also want to keep track of, of changes that come from the user who is triggering things like change events or uh, anything on the form elements where things are getting updated. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that I want Angular to basically handle all this for me. So I'm going to say ng model and um, I'm going to tell it which backing piece of my model in the component is going to store this. So I have something here in my in my component ID, for example. Inside of this, I'm going to say that I want this to be connected. So I'm going to get rid of these. So I want two-way data binding to occur into the ID member of this component, and so I want the I want it to basically handle all aspects of working with. Um, working with this input element. So I'm going to do one more thing. The same way that up here I gave a reference name to, I have a variable that I can work with in other parts of my code. What I want to do here is I want to say that the, this, I'm going to call this thing bridge ID and I want to basically have access to um, the data that's in this. So I want to be able to listen for all the events, do data binding, and I also want to be able to refer to this in other parts of my, of my template. Okay, so we need to do this all the way down. So let's just do this for, let's just do this for each one of them. So I need to say, ng model is equal to the name, and this will be bridge name equals ng model. And again, don't ever copy and paste. This will be the latitude. This will be the latitude. Longitude. Longitude. year, year, width, and width, and 
length and length like that. Okay, so what Angular is going to do for me here is the with a template driven form, the source of truth for you know how the data in the model works is this thing here. So it's the the template is where the data where the data is stored, and what's going to happen is the data inside of my component is going to be kept in sync using two-way data binding. So if the user types in something in here, you know, this gets this gets some string in it, it's going to it's going to become available to um, you know into the into my component via the member that I've bound to it. Uh, okay, good. So so far in order to create an Angular form We've started with an HTML5 form, and we've we've added a bunch of deck. We've added added a bunch of directives to connect this in, so that our data binding and our um, and our access to certain named portions of this will work. Okay, so if we were to um, let me modify the let's just in our code just so you can see how this is working. When we hit submit. Um, let's just dump out the uh, form dot value so you can see what's in here. So I'm gonna so let's go here and I'll say bridge uh, one two three four forty nine point six eight six negative ninety two dot whatever four digit year one two three four uh, leave these blank and I hit submit. So what you can see now is that I have access I have access to the forms value because I'm passing this in and you can see in my console here I have all of the data that was passed to me like so so the data comes out and here it is so you know these values in the form are they're they're available uh, they're available on the object this object also has a bunch of other so there's, let's do this. I'll just print out a bunch of things. So this is the value of the form. We could also print out whether or not the form is valid. And so it returns a property to me, the valid property. We could find out whether the form is dirty. Has the user entered anything in it? Have they changed anything in it since it was first rendered? Um, has the user touched this form yet, etc. So we have a bunch of these properties. So if I submit the form right now, you can see that the form is not valid. Why? Because we have a bunch of these things that are required and they're not there. Um, but the user has not entered anything in yet. There's nothing in there yet that's, uh, that's a problem. Okay, so let's let's add a little bit more using some of these uh, pieces of Angular that are going to allow us to display this form in a way that's going to be more helpful to the user. So one thing I can do is I can work with C special CSS properties for the for the form. So let's do this. Let's say um, for all of our input elements when they have the focus if they have this class defined ng valid then what i want to do is i want to outline the the component in uh or the element in a in a green outline and similarly if they are invalid then i want to do it in red like so. So let me show you what's going on here. So you see, as soon as I as soon as my form loads, this comes up and it's red. And if I tab down, this one is red. This one is red. This one is red. This one is red. Why are they red? So if we look at the elements, if I were to inspect this input element here, you're going to see it has a bunch of classes that are on it right now. 
So ng invalid has been added to this. So what Angular is going to do is it's going to ng. You can see ng pristine. In other words, this hasn't been changed. Like it's exactly the way that it was originally rendered. You know, as soon as I start typing in here, if I say a, you can see that now ng pristine is gone. You can see that ng touched has been put in its place. So this thing has, you know, has been touched. The value is dirty. So like we have to do something with the valid and you can see that this is now valid. So you see how it's, it's lit up in green. It's lit up in green because I'm saying if this is valid, I want to change the styling of this somehow. I want to make this look different. So it's valid because it was required. If I delete it and there's nothing there, then it's going to break. So this is valid name. This is the, this is a name, this, whatever. I put something in here. We don't have anything too specific in here. This is only going to work. So if I type 19, eight, or if I say 84, right? Or if I say the year is 20, none of these are going to work. But if I say 2020, because our regular expression says that this can have four digits and it, it'll work. If I have a space in here, that's going to be fine because we said that. But if I start typing something else, it's going to break. So it's going to check and see whether the input element matches the requirement. So if you have a minimum length that's been set or you have a pattern that's been set or you have, you know, some piece, uh, some kind of validation that's been set on this element, Angular is going to set these classes for you automatically. So then when, you know, when you want to style things, you can come in here and say, well, let's make this so that it, um, so that it shows differently. Um, let me show you one last thing we could do. So in our template, one of the things we did was we gave each one of these um, each one of these input elements we gave them a, a template reference variable. So we have a name, bridge ID, bridge name, bridge latitude. And what we can do with these is we can use them to build other parts of our other parts of our template. So let's say that down here at the bottom, I want to have a div and I want to show errors down here, but I only want to show these errors if a certain condition is true. So if the, if the form, how do I access the form? I can use its reference variable here, bridge form. So if the bridge form is invalid, and the bridge form has been touched. So if the user has entered something and it's not correct, then what we can do is we could put in a bunch of error messages. So now let's do, let's do some, let's say, if the bridge ID is invalid, then let's put a message of an ID is required. If the bridge name is invalid, name is required, you get the idea. Ng if bridge uh, latitude is invalid, then um, latitude is required. Okay, so we have these we have these error messages here, and let me just let me do uh, a little bit of styling on them. So let's say that our our errors div um, let's set the color to red for the text, and let's mimic our our form. Let's say the max width is. 400 pixels, margin on the left is auto, margin on the right is auto, and let's just see how this looks. So when this thing loads up, nothing shows. 
But as soon as I go here and I type, um, what have I done wrong? Oh, I haven't saved this. Okay, so I come in here and this is fine. But as soon as I go down, you'll see that now I've modified the form and I'm getting these error messages. So an ID is required. So if I put an ID in, then that error message disappears. If I put a name in, disappears. Uh, those disappear. But if I don't put them in, I'm gonna have these errors come up. Now these could go anywhere. Like I'm putting them down here. You could put them inside of the form, above the form, below the form. Like, you know, you can have them look however you want. Um, let's, let me show you, like, let's do something a little bit more interesting with the year. So let's say we're interested in catching different kinds of errors with the year. So the year could be, um, if the year, so one thing I can do is I could say, let's check the errors that are currently occurring on the bridge year and there may be no errors. So if there are no errors, I wanna be careful. So in TypeScript I can do, actually in JavaScript too, this is just coming into JavaScript, but I can say that if you haven't seen this syntax before, this says, if I did this, it would fail. This would be, if this was undefined, this would not work. But I can guard against that by saying, this may or may not exist, so I wanna be careful before I touch this before I try and um, reference a key within this object, I wanna make sure it exists. So if the error that's triggered is that it's required and it's not there, then I'm gonna say a year is required. And I'm gonna say that if the errors that we get, if the error we get back is because the pattern is wrong, then I'm gonna say a different thing, the year must be four digits in length. Save this. Okay, so we go along and we say we have an ID, we have a name, we have this, you know, one, two. Now we get to this and a year is required. So now I type in one, two, and you see how it changes down at the bottom? The year must be four digits in length. Like there's a year there, but um, the, the required error is not taking place. The error that's taking place is that the pattern isn't being matched. So if I say 2020, then this matches and that clears and it goes away. And so then we have, we have access to this. So this is an example of a template driven form. And most of the work is happening in the template. You're using special Angular directives to be able to handle two-way data binding between your, your form elements, your form itself, and being able to then connect that so that any changes that happen in the, any changes that happen in the form that the user does, it's gonna trigger events in the input elements, and those input elements are then, when they fire off their change event or whatever it is, it's going to get picked up and managed inside of your backing data model, that's gonna happen automatically for you um, because in your template, you connect up to pieces of data that live inside of, the, um, inside of the component. We can use CSS to work with these classes that get added. And we can also do the same sort of thing in our template where we work with, you know, is this valid? Has this been touched, et cetera? What are the errors that this had? So in order to make this work, I'm, I'm connecting the, um, the input element to, I have a reference, a template reference variable that lets me connect back to it. Okay, that's a good place to pause. What I'm gonna do is in the next video, I'm gonna rewrite this form using reactive forms just to show you the difference. And then I will do it a third time and I will use the Angular components to make it happen. So I'll pause this one here and we'll pick it up again in a second.